our young adults seem to be full of confidence in the way they speak dress look and act but when i look into their eyes there is a lot of fear insecurity and sometimes indifference reflecting back obviously the outer facade is just a cover up being a mother of two young adults age 22 and 19 i sense this with my own kids at times i feel overwhelmed imagining what their future will be like today i see my kids and their peers mostly holed up in their rooms staring at a computer screen for hours at end they seem to be uninterested in what is happening outside they are lost in their own inner worlds perhaps because we as parents have failed to provide them with something meaningful recently a good friend's son was arrested for assaulting a cop on duty when he was stopped at a nakabandi and asked to produce his papers acharya ji i sense this pent up frustration and anger amongst our young adults i feel a sense of helplessness because i too am frustrated at the current state of affairs i can only imagine what they must be going through acharya ji please can you talk a bit on our youth and how best to guide them thank you love and gratitude nimisha nimisha are you surprised when you look at a 6 month old a 3 year old or 6 year old and you find him eager for his food comfort security entertainment oblivious of all other worldly or other worldly concerns do you cry out why is this three year old lost in his little self and little world why is he not eager for liberation how many three year olds have you found longing for liberation have you found that Hmm? not only do you not accuse the kid or the boy of not being enough of a seeker you in fact find his ignorance towards everything but his own comfort as cute don't you hmm it is a norm and it is a very acceptable norm with us is it not 3 year olds will be 3 year olds similarly do you feel worried when you look at 
an animal busy doing what animals do does that look apocalyptic to you do you say the end of the world is surely near because the deer has no interest in the scriptures deers do what deers are supposed to do three year old human kids do what three year olds are supposed to do but when it comes <clears throat> to young members of the species homo sapiens then we somehow have very romantic expectations we mean to say that if a human being is young he should naturally be full of light eagerness to learn let's look at what all you expect from them fearlessness interest in the affairs of world humility meaning and purpose in life i'm asking you from where is this idealism coming why do you expect these things from young human beings in the first place you have quoted swami vivekanand as saying the minds of our modern youths are becoming storehouses of multiple complexes such as sex complex fear complex ego complex inferiority complex hidden in your eagerness is an image an ideal and all ideals spring from an obliviousness to the fact very ideally you are assuming and desiring that a young person should be free of the complexes and compulsions of sex fear ego and comparison why must it be like that what entitles you to think and demand that just by virtue of having attained a certain age a human being should be free of sex fear ego inferiority and many many other bad things you look at a swami vivekanand and then you want the others to be like that but a swami vivekanand is not normal he is an aberration he is a great exception just by looking at him if you start assuming that all young human beings 
by default should be like him then you are missing the fact of what it means to be a human being look at the life cycle of the ordinary human being we say he is designed to live till 100 he is designed to live till 100 when does he begin to procreate at 12 14 it is under the influence of civilization that you push him to delay his reproductive activity otherwise when it comes to prakriti physical nature she prepares him or her and pushes him to indulge in the sexual and reproductive act even at the age of 10 or 12 or 14 now that's quite interesting because the man is supposed to live till 100 but the sexual act does not start somewhere close to the midpoint it does not start at 30 or 40 or 50 in fact even before one reaches midway the sexual act actually starts tapering off if 100 is how long one is supposed to live then by 50 the sexual zeal has mostly diminished it is at its peak not when you are 40 or 50 or 60 but when you are just 15 or 20 what does it tell you about this so called glorious period called youth has prakriti prepared you for greatness greatness in the likes of swami vivekananda is a great exception prakriti does not prepare you for greatness prakriti prepares you for procreation all this great upsurge of energy that you see in youth is not meant to break their chains or raise a fire that would unfetter them all this great energy that we so fondly talk of in youth is actually aim that just furtherance of the prakritik motives so first of all let's keep our expectations in check first of all let's not unduly assume that youth is the golden period of one's life first of all let's not assume without fact or reason young is to be desirous of freedom it is not so and therefore what you are seeing in today's youth is just 
normal in worldly language natural the boy has reached 20 what is he supposed to do look at the massive universe and wonder about its secrets hmm think about how insignificant he is in the greater order of things look at the birds and the bees and say oh all this is but maya do you see that in animals do you see that in kids then why do you expect that the youth would magically turn into great lovers of truth and freedom you are saying oh the youth are so full of sex fear ego and inferiority do you equally lament it when you see that the kids and the old ones are full of sex ego fear and inferiority or superiority no you don't lament it then i have not heard anybody come and say you know sir all the octogenarians and the nanogenarians they are so full of ego they don't have the desire or energy for liberation neither have i heard somebody come to me and say my pintu is now 6 years old but he has no yearning for god but then it becomes quite strange the fellow has no feeling for freedom when he is 6 and you don't find it odd the fellow has no feeling for freedom when he is 60 that too you don't find odd but when the fellow is 25 then you expect that somehow magically just like swami vivekanand he too will turn into an ideal seeker renouncing everything sacrificing everything for the sake of inner joy why would he do that what is it about attaining a certain age in life that makes you think that one would be full of zeal and energy and compassion and great love for the truth nothing nimisha 6 is 16 16 is 26 26 is 46 46 is 86 nothing changes when you are 6 you behave as your dna dictates you to behave at 6 when you are 26 you behave just as your dna dictates you to behave at 26 and when you are 66 you behave just as your dna be- dictates you to behave at 66 we are just another species of animals why do you forget that just because in between once in a few centuries you get somebody like swami vivekananda who 
seems to defy the prakritic order we start thinking too big of ourselves we disrespect and undervalue avivekananda so much that we feel that what he did was fairly normal easy and common we want that to be the norm we say oh if he could do it why are the other youth not found doing it and when they are not found doing it then we regret and lament and complain do you see that it is based on an underestimation of what it means really to be a swami vivekananda if we could really see that he was an utter genius an unthinkable aberration an everest inner landscape crowded at best with plateaus then we would not demand that every normal youth be free of fear and lust and ego and self centeredness we compare ourselves to the ideal that is vivekanand and when we find ourselves short then we say oh the times are so bad we are not even vivekanand you know it really is kaliyug i'm not able to match even vivekanand excuse me what did you just say it suits a vivekanand to be free of lust and fear and ego others will be others why do you expect them to be abnormal if not paranormal they are not supposed to be in fact if they act as if they are vivekanand then they would be putting up a facade as most youth do now they are stuck between the devil and the deep blue sea if they are being themselves which is if they are following their animal instincts then you say oh you are necessarily putting up a facade as you have mentioned in your question is it not so let's think over it that if they try to act spiritual then they are really putting up a facade hmm i know what i'm saying is not idealistic most people will not find it uplifting or motivating but then i find facts more valuable than any kind of motivational fiction you are saying youth has pent up frustration and anger and there is no dearth of literature 
an opinion that suggests that youth is angry and frustrated because there is no freedom in the world is that really so is the youth really clamoring for freedom ask them why are you frustrated how many of them would really say we want to be free of our ego and that is why we are frustrated what is it that makes them frustrated if you want to know that see what is it that would quell their frustration or calm them down offer them money offer them sex offer them some weed offer them comfort and all the frustration and anger is gone it's not so is it real of you nimisha to think that the youth are frustrated and angry because they are not getting enlightenment seriously i'm again asking you at 8 he didn't want enlightenment even at 48 you will not find him wanting enlightenment what makes you think that at 28 he should be full of urge to seek enlightenment he does not seek it he is not designed to seek it look at man's configuration what makes you think that a kid is born to be a swami vivekanand no what makes you think that a woman is born to be one of the greats amira or amari neither mira bai nor mari kyuri it's an imposition upon her if you constantly push her the mira or mari way she starts menstruating at 12 now what is mira and what is mari the boy starts masturbating at 14 what swami vivekanand and often you don't even have to teach him to masturbate it comes to him in your language naturally you don't have to teach it to him even if he has been living in a cave he would learn to explore his body why bring swami vivekananda into all this he was a distant star let us continuously and steadfastly remember who we are otherwise we start thinking too much of ourselves otherwise we start feeling as if enlightenment is a birthright and seeking enlightenment is a fundamental duty neither is enlightenment a birthright nor is a human being obliged in any way to seek freedom or liberation human beings are designed to eat sleep have sex and die if you expect anything beyond this from them that is when they will get frustrated and they will rebel
you know of the rebellious youth movement of the 60s and 70s right the counter culture you know of the hippies i do not know how many of them were getting god but what is certain is that most of them probably all of them were getting good sex that's what the youthful rebellious energy is all about how many hippies got god how many of them got good sex hmm rare utterly rare is a human being of any age who is magically implored from within to chart a totally different way it has always been and would always remain a sensational exception the others will continue to do what they are designed to do and to you nimisha if you expect otherwise from them it's almost like crying in despair when you don't find a donkey reciting the gayatri mantra oh it's a young donkey you see and you have expectations you feel that a young person must be full of reverence for the scriptures why do you forget that youth is just another period of the life cycle hmm prakriti invests in you that tremendous energy at that time so that you can produce babies and that's what your principal concern will be i want babies have you ever wondered why old people don't procreate rather can't procreate because they don't have enough energy and prakriti says bringing up a baby raising a kid requires a lot of physical energy so it is not a coincidence that you exhibit the peak of your reproductive activity sexual activity when it is coinciding with the peak of your energy levels don't you see the coincidence the peak of your energy levels coincide with the peak of your sexual activity so what has prakriti given you all this energy for isn't it obvious prakriti has given you all this energy so that you can chase men and women this energy has not been given to you so that you can climb up the himalayas and meditate there this energy has been given to you so that you can run after the woman pick her up please her five times a day when you look at swami vekanand you feel oh the energy is there so that the fellow can criss cross the country on feet raise awareness among the masses exhort them towards freedom no look at the chimps our cousins 
and you will realize what all this energy is for what does a chimpanzee use his youthful energy for he uses that energy to beat down the other male chimpanzees and secure the most fertile females among the lot that's why we have all this energy let's lower the expectations a little in fact by the time you cross 50 don't you see that your sexual urge diminishes even prakriti knows that by the time you gain a little sense owing to your life experiences you would probably not be so deeply interested in the mating game so prakriti says before you gain any wisdom any sense any experience it is important that you do what i command to do that work should be given the top priority and must get finished off as quickly as possible so you become sexually eager just as you cross your childhood prakriti does not want to wait even a day after that the day you are not a child you are immediately sexually eager prakriti says first things first your freedom your wisdom your liberation all can wait this thing must take the first priority now what has happened is civilization has blocked that so we have passed laws that say you know the girl has to be 18 the boy has to be 21 and if she is below 16 then it becomes an even more heinous offense and the social structure is such that you say when 18 and 21 are no good you must first of all earn have a career be economically secure so 21 gets pushed to 25 or 28 and so there is frustration nothing else you know when i was in class 12th we had this novel hmm lord of the flies right and at that time i had wondered rather resented why this kind of a novel is being taught to impressionable students we were just 16 or 17 those who are from the isc board might know a lot of the flies william golding hmm? oh i forget that there is a generation gap hmm? isc is not what isc used to be you have read that one so what was it about it's the second world war and a group of school kids from britain they lose their way while on a flight they are probably being taken to a secure location given that the war is raging but somehow the plane loses its way it lands on a desolate island bereft of any 
trace of any civilization. The pilot is dead. The pilot is dead and the kids are on their own. And the kids vary from 5 year olds to well, probably 15 year olds. And the entire novel is about how the kids very very quickly turn into beasts and they are from a very prestigious school of one of the most developed nations on the earth they actually don't turn into beasts man is a beast it is under the transforming effect of civilization that man appears to be a little different from a chimpanzee or some other animal otherwise that's what we are beasts why do you expect Nimisha that the young people would naturally be like the sannyasis of Swami Vivekananda why should be why should they be that way the climactic scene with which the novel is eponymous sees the kids slaughtering one of their own and putting up his severed head on a stick and the flies on the island have all shrouded that head and the head is hardly visible the lord of the flies and then there are a couple of more deaths a couple of more murders rather they almost turn into cannibals and all this within a matter of a few months our civilization is a facade it doesn't take long for the veneer to come off Remove fear, remove police, and remove the incentives towards civilized behavior. And very soon, you will see how much of Swami Vivekananda is there in today's youth. Later on, I felt grateful that the novel was a part of the syllabus. Far better to know the facts than to wallow in ideals. The serious, austere, simple, energetic, fearless, truth-loving young man is an idea. He really does not exist. He has to be brought into existence by someone who is exactly that which needs to be brought into existence.
before we talk of Swami Vivekananda and Misha, let's talk of Ramakrishna Paramhans. There would have been no Swami Vivekanand had there been no Paramhans first of all. Swami Vivekanands don't drop off from the sky. They are raised, they are made, they are given birth not by their mothers but by somebody like Paramhans. Where is Paramhans? Swami Vivekanand was an ordinary man, Narendra. And he too had his ordinary pursuits. It was the magical touch of Paramhans that turned him into Vivekanand. And he wasn't too eager either. Many a times he ran away from Ramakrishna. Sometimes in the name of family responsibility, sometimes in the name of education, sometimes because he was just bored with this ordinary devotee of Dakshineshwar temple. Hmm? It's a gigantic task. It doesn't just happen on its own. If you leave the youth to how they are, it is not liberation that would happen. Procreation would happen. On its own, liberation never happens. Procreation happens. That you don't have to teach. But we somehow have a feeling that liberation is cheap. It too should happen on its own. Why must it happen on its own? When we complain that our sons and daughters are not like Nivekananda and Nivedita. We must first ask ourselves, are we like Ramakrishna and Sharda? If we are not like Ramakrishna and Sharda, how will our sons and daughters be like Vivekananda and Nivedita? I repeat, fruits drop from trees. It is automatic, it is prakritic, it just happens. Man does not automatically get liberated. Man does not even have a conscious innate desire for liberation. It is not there. In fact, if somebody has it, it is unnatural. Unnatural in the prakritic sense. One is not supposed to have it. How will you have it? Even Vivekanand would not have had it. Had it not been aroused in him by an external agency. Nobody can just have it. Except maybe let's say one in a million, one in a billion. We should not even talk of them. They are some kind of manufacturing problems. They are God's mistakes. Hmm? They cannot be taken as the rule. They cannot be taken as ideals.
throughout his childhood the fellow was interested in toys and sweets right when he would play with fellow kids he would either be violent or afraid and we would say oh this is for the course for kids this is how kids are right and when he turns 15 then we say why is he not turning towards wisdom literature why must he turn towards wisdom literature a 6 month old baby you go close to him you want to kiss his face and what does he do he extends his little fingers and clasps at your necklace then do you complain that the fellow is so materialistic i wanted to kiss but all he was looking at was my necklace and you know that babies do exhibit exactly this kind of behavior right go close to them and they'll want to grab whatever they can not god something material if arjun goes to them they will this is from experience hmm and the grip is firm the fist won't open too easily and when you try to force it open then the kid would cry do you see the fellow has an inclination towards fisting right from that age he wants to hold stuff here and then you don't say why is he not like swami vivekananda why does he not approach people with palms wide open one denoting that i came with nothing the other denoting i will go away with nothing then you don't say then you say oh he is but a baby it is very natural that he is clasping at everything tomorrow he clasps at money at security at all these things that you are complaining against then why do you find it odd just as this fist was trying to clutch something similarly at some other age this same fist is used to clutch the genital don't you see it's the same stream why complain against it when it comes midway its very origin is in darkness how do you expect it to magically transform all by itself when it reaches the mid ranges it won't the clasping fist is it not symbolic of babies across gender nationality religion this is what you will find little kids always exhibiting instead of 
forcing an idealism upon them nimisha it would be far better if we first of all have them realize that beneath the wheel of civilization we are 100% apes and chimpanzees and even this civilization is an attempt gone badly wrong it was supposed to raise us from the jungle instead it has been such a botched up attempt that it has repressed us that which needed to be elevated could not be elevated so to hide the failure it has been repressed are you getting it and that has given rise to the dark and dirty subconscious mind which is a storehouse of all kinds of frustrations and desires and pent up urges if you will four skids to behave differently than their prakritik selves their jungle selves their chimpanzee selves then they will do that with persuasiveness and punishment an incentive you can succeed in getting the youth to behave in an ideal way but i assure you beneath that ideal behavior an angry chimpanzee would still be lurking and the chimpanzee would now be very very angry very very angry why would he be angry because he is being made to act like swami vivekananda inside a chimpanzee and outside he has been forced to behave as a swami you see a lot of that in circus don't you the elephant is walking on two legs and shaking hands with kids how do you think he is actually feeling that's how our civilized youth are especially spiritually civilized youth the chimpanzee is speaking in french and reciting sanskrit verses inside he is swearing he'll have a super go at you whenever he can get half a chance hmm there was this parrot who was being made to ride a bicycle a little bicycle you know how do you think the parrot is feeling that's how the youth today are feeling
you want to elevate their consciousness right first of all you must know what elevation really means and you must know even before that where do you want to elevate them from it is a problem if you do not know where you want to go it's a far more massive problem if you do not know where you are standing you can be helped if you do not know where to go you cannot be helped if you do not tell where you are standing i need help i need help but where are you that i do not know first of all tell the youth where they are really standing tell them that they are chimpanzees as we all are it's not an insult it's the fact of our physical existence it's not a humiliation don't unnecessarily you go lies the human birth don't say that because you are born as a biped and your surname is singh or shukla or johnson so you are destined to do great things tell them that it doesn't matter that you are born human the fact is you are an animal and you better know that you better fully fully acknowledge that all your natural instincts are towards physical security continuation procreation that's what you continuously want and you should never never forget this teach this to the youngster teach this to the youngster even before he turns young let him know this when he is 8 years of age when he looks at the dog going after the bitch and asks mama what's this tell him human birth we all are born as a result of this and we are all born to do this man is a dog woman is a bitch without exception that's what this entire drama is about and no amount of economic progress technical sophistication or civilizational advancement can hide that or should hide that that's what man's basic energy is libido you can give it fascinating names all right teach this to them and when they encounter the fact of their savagery in all its bloodiness then maybe a repulsion and inner repugnance would arise and that would be transformational but there can be no transformation without an intimacy with the fact if the fellow is thinking as most of us do that we are special just because we were born in a hospital and not in a jungle then too bad for us man might find it humiliating the ego finds it absolutely scurrilous that after centuries rather millennia of development and progress one is still to be called an animal but we must acknowledge it because that is the fact and every kid must be taught this 
then there would be the one odd little narendra who would say i hear this i know this to be true as a fact but i don't like this there is something in me that revolts against this and then let him walk out of the classroom and discover a paramhans and then there is some possibility of a real vivekanand taking birth you do not get them cheap nimisha please it's almost like asking why aren't diamonds falling from the skies and complaining and crying horse oh there was a hail storm there was a hail storm why didn't i find precious stones in them why must you find precious stones in them a hail storm will give you water frozen water what makes you think that you will find diamonds amongst hills how did you come to have this expectation what makes you think that you will just find a vivekanand amongst usual human beings hmm? i bought 5 kgs of mangoes and now i am weeping so badly why because none of the mangoes contained emeralds i cut them all open all i found was a normal seed a big one ha huh? mangoes will be mangoes chimpanzees will be chimpanzees a human chimpanzee cannot just turn into a vivekanand drop the expectation instead teach him that he is a chimpanzee sounds brutal but would be helpful that's what he needs to hear and acknowledge i am a chimp don't just go about telling him no no you are god personified when god wants to visit earth then he takes birth as a kid stop all this nonsense there are too many people who have actually hypnotized themselves into believing that they are the true self or silence or atma or brahm even chimpanzees are mocking him imagine one of them saying i am brahm Hmm? and then rushing towards the nearest fruit or the nearest female and constantly reciting i am brahm brahmanzi that's a good name for most spiritual seekers especially those who believe that they have attained brahmalinta brahmanzi yes next time you find yourselves energetic just ask yourselves if this prakritik energy is arising in me surely prakriti wants just one thing from me and then you will be left aghast and very disappointed with yourself because you will find that behind 
all the reasons that you assign to yourself ultimately there are just these few basic primeval things that you want it would be shocking and it would be humiliating but it would be real let's for a change give value to reality hmm look at your likes dislikes urges if the session were happening in a forsaken place dark and damp you wouldn't have been probably so eager to attend here you are far more agreeable ask yourself what is it that makes me angry to this environment rather than a so called inferior environment and even here you will find prakritiv motives even here the more you will scrutinize your behavior actions thoughts and intentions the more horrified you will be all the time there is just fulfillment at the material level that we are seeking it would be truly horrifying to discover even when we say that we are spiritual seekers it is actually material fulfillment that we are targeting and if you can look at your life your actions and intentions with that brutal honesty then it is possible that out of sheer disgust towards yourself you say i'm dropping myself but without that ruthless honesty you will just keep believing that you are a lover of truth will you remember this we are not born to be lovers of truth each of us is born as a lover of flesh so if an inner voice says i am doing this for the sake of truth i am doing this because i like truth don't believe it too easily if you'll go closer if you'll investigate you will find that all attempts all intentions all likes and dislikes all decisions ultimately boil down to just the prakritik narrative food comfort and sex that's what we live for that's what we act for and that's what we die for that's what we are kids for that's what we are young for that's what we are old for what is the fellow going to the temple for food comfort and sex what is the fellow giving birth for what is the fellow committing suicide for
one thing that you should stoutly resist believing in is your own piousness that's your greatest propaganda against yourself i am pious i have holy intentions come on hmm what do you think fake news are a recent phenomena <laughs> and whatsapp can't ban it you don't have to forward it to others you inward it to yourself i am pious and i have holy intentions this was the first piece of fake news invented by man never forget that the intentions of the chimpanzee are just food comfort sex